from the St. Charles Country Club, stately and rich in tradition. An exacting test of championship golf in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. A semi-final match between the winner of more than 125 international championships, including the British Open, the very popular Roberto Di Vicenzo from Buenos Aires, Argentina and the outstanding Canadian touring professional, a member of the 1968 World Cup Championship Canadian team, George Newtson of Toronto, Canada. On the scene to describe the action is three-time winner of the Masters, PGA Hall of Fame member, Jimmy DeMaret. This is Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, a championship international elimination tournament played on the world's most famous courses. This week, the St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. As history measures time, a hundred years is a split second, a barely perceptible movement of the hands of the cosmic clock. But to the men who make history, a hundred years is a lifetime and more. This is Manitoba's centennial year, and visitors by the thousands will be coming to the province and to its beautiful capital, Winnipeg, to say happy birthday and to help honor the men and events that have shaped those first hundred years. What will they find? What sort of a city is Winnipeg? It is a dynamic, modern city with smart shops, fine restaurants, and a busy, bustling attitude that seems to say, this is where things are happening. It is a city of homes, tree shaded and comfortable. Homes that stand proudly on their own land, seeming to tell their neighbors, don't crowd, there's plenty of room for everybody here on the prairie. Winnipeg is a growing city flexing its muscles and pushing toward the sky in the geometry of today. It is a city of parks, lovely and flower-laden. Or homes for the native animals that live in their protective enclosures and delight their ever-present audience with uninhibited antics. And Winnipeg is a dynamic cultural community, proud of the fact that it is the home of one of the world's most celebrated dance companies, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, whose tours have carried the name and fame of Winnipeg to the entire world. Manitoba and Winnipeg will welcome you at any time, but this year especially, they ask you to pay them a visit. The River Rouge will be working overtime, as will every institution, every citizen of this lovely, history-rich country to make your visit a memorable one. Come and help celebrate Manitoba's happy birthday. It's going to be the biggest party in a hundred years. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, the gateway to Western Canada, Shell presents one of its semifinal matches of our International Championship Elimination Tournament between 12 of the world's finest professional golfers, and they'll be competing for $37,000 top prize money. In the opening match of our elimination series, you saw Roberto Di Vicenzo beat Tom Weiskopf and Dave Stockton in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Playing in his hometown, Roberto overwhelmed his younger opponents by firing a six under par 66 to qualify for today's first semifinal match. George Knudsen traveled down to Sao Paulo, Brazil, where he broke an old course record of 68, set by Di Vicenzo as he shot a three under par round of 67. He had to defeat the 1969 Masters champion, George Archer, and a real scrambler in Lee Elder. Knudsen played a remarkable round of golf from tee to green. It was his accuracy from the fairways that got George a place in today's semifinals. So let's meet the players in today's match, coming to you from the St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg. First, we have a hometown boy right here from uh, uh, St. Charles Golf Club, Thank George Knudsen. George, how does it feel to play uh, uh, well, among all of your friends right here? Jim, it's just I can't put into words how great it is to be home and uh, playing against a fellow like Roberto, I'm sure we'll have a wonderful match. And uh, it's been the old saying, you know, for many years that it's very tough to play in your hometown, and I'd have to agree with that. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, George, and good luck to you. Thank you. And this great old campaigner from around the world, a winner of more international championships than any man in the history of the game, 
and uh, Roberto uh, Di Vicenzo from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thank you. Roberto, how do you find this head-to-head uh, -head, uh, competition? Do you like this better or just out there when you're playing metal play? Well, I, I like playing uh, metal play. I don't want to see it, uh, George when he make a long putt for birdies, and I prefer to see the uh, other guys and uh, play with me, but no, 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 no head to head. I am very nervous. Oh, now. you're very nervous. Yeah. Well, you don't look it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you know, uh, Roberto? You won the honor, the toss of the coin. So why don't you fellas get over there, and I'll join you in just a second. Thank you. Great. Thank you, George. Thank you. Very much. The opening hole at the St. Charles Country Club is a par five, 520 yards. There's a lot of driving room down the fairway, a trap on the right about 170 yards off the tee, a tree on the left about 220 yards should not bother the players. The green is guarded by two large traps, one on each side. We'll be playing under the rules of the Royal Canadian Golf Association, which are identical to the rules of the USGA. And stepping to the tee with the honor from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Roberto Di Vicenzo. Roberto uh, starts it down the left side. This is a dog leg. It's going to land out in the left. It's going to be very close to the gallery on the left hand side, but I believe he's okay. This is a 522 5 par. He did hit out into the rough, and uh, I believe that's where it's going to stop. This course is measuring 6,757 yards long. Par is 72. Oh, George gets a beauty there. He starts it down the center. The wind is drifting it off a little bit to the right. It's going to land in the fairway. Kicks off to the right side. And George is right on the edge of the fairway on the right side. The wind drifted that off, and he's just in the edge of the fairway. Uh, Di Vicenzo's ball stopped in the rough. It's about 250 yards off the tee. George Knudsen out on the right side of the fairway, 240. And there's Knudsen going at it with a driver. He has a good lie, and George trying to reach it in two. He pushes it off to the right. He's going to be short of that trap, and his ball stops in the fairway, just short of the trap and short of the green, about 50 yards. Roberto Di Vicenzo is buried fairly deep in that fescue off to the left side. And... Uh, Di Vicenzo using a three wood. It's headed right straight toward the green. It may get all the way up there. It's a beautiful shot, and Roberto really put the overspin out on that one out of the fescue. It landed 100 yards short of the green and continued on up toward the flag, and Roberto is on this 522-yard par five, number one at St. Charles in two, and George Knudsen is short of the green about 50 yards. George is out in front of the green here in two, pitching it up with his wedge. And he nips it uh, very good. Looks awfully good right at the flag. And what a shot there for Newton. He really hit that one nice and low, and it stopped just about four feet from the flag. Officiating today's match between DiVicenzo and Newton is Dr. Dwight Parkinson, and He's president of the St. Charles uh, Country Club. Uh, doctors, it's a delightful to have you with us today. Well, Jimmy, it's a delight for us to be, be here with you people. And we're delighted to have you all here. Well, fine. And we'll be seeing you along the line here. I'm sure you won't have much problem with these two fellows. Here's Roberto Di Vicenzo, and he has a long putt for an Eagle Three here. Roberto's putt is, looks good, and that's a fine approach shot. for a long time, and he is a good lag putter. Roberto got his birdie here on number one. Uh, George Knudsen played a fine little chip shot in uh, from about uh, 50 yards short of the green, played a magnificent little pitch and run with his wedge, and he stopped it about four feet away, and George has this putt for his birdie. Oh, boy. George uh, played it out to the left side. It certainly looks like uh, it would break uh, to the right, but it didn't. And if there is any weakness in George's game, I believe it's a little short putt. And through the first hole, Roberto Di Vicenzo picks up a birdie, and George Knudsen a par. Di Vicenzo leads at one under par on Shell's wonderful world of golf.
On the par four, 365 yard second hole, both players were driving into the wind. Roberto drove down the middle of the fairway about 255 yards. Knudsen pushed his tee shot to the right and was out about 225 yards from the tee. Both players then went on to have the hole and Roberto DiVincenzo maintained his early one-shot lead over George Knudsen. The players were still driving into the win on the par four, 424 yard third hole and came up with short drives. DiVincenzo was out about 220 yards while Knudsen about five yards short of Roberto was in the right hand rough and selected a four iron for his second shot. He started it uh, to the green. It's going to land short, runs up toward the green and stops on the upslope just short of the sand trap, but short of the green. Good shot by Knudsen. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate the greenskeeper and his crew here at the St. Charles Country Club. You know, they had a very unusual rough winter up here, and the course has only been officially open a couple of weeks. But these men have really eliminated all but a very few burnt off areas, and the course is in fine shape. Diva sends a, ooh, Roberto with the five irons, way off to the right. It's coming back a little bit, but way off to the right. Roberto DiVincenzo went out to the right of the crowd, landed in the adjacent fairway and near the bushes over there. We don't know if he caught those bushes or not, but uh, he's very close to those small pine trees off to the right of the screen and could be in trouble. Although he might have got a break, we'll have to wait and see. DiVincenzo got quite a break there. His ball came very close to those small bushes to the right of the green, trickled on down into the short rough, and fortunately the uh, cup is cut on the left side of the green and gives him a little uh, room to pitch up onto the green. He's pitching downhill, and he is from a downhill lie. Uses wedge, and it looks like it's going to be a good one. Good shot by DiVincenzo. Knocked it just about three feet from the cup. And... He cashed in on that good break by playing a fine chip shot back up to about three feet past the cup. Here's uh, George Knudsen oh. coming up with his, uh, George using about an eight iron to pitch it up, has a lot of green uphill, and he kicks it up on oh, the right foot. That's, that's a very good, good shot. Good, good shot. Uh, two good chip shots up by Knudsen and DiVincenzo there, both about the same distance from the cup. Knudsen... Uh, is maybe an inch out. He's going to putt for his par. That's a good putt. Good four there by Knudsen. Uh, he came up from short of the green, chipped it up about three feet. DiVincenzo here could really get him a scrambling four if he makes this about the same length, three footer. Good putt by DiVincenzo. We saw some good scrambling here on this third hole. And through the third hole, this match remains the same. DiVincenzo is one under par, and Knudsen even. The players will be going for the $10,000 hole-in-one prize money here on the par three, 236-yard fourth hole. And back on the tee with a one iron is Roberto DiVincenzo. He hits a good-looking shot that lands just about 10 high and rolls up on the back side of the green. He will have a putt of about 18 feet for a birdie. And here's Knudsen. George is going with a three wood. George, a good swing, a good hit of the ball. He starts it at the green. It's hooking a little now. It's going to land on the green and runs up toward the gallery. And Knudsen on the left side of the green and... Divisenzo also to the left of the pin, but about half the distance away that Knudsen is. Both Divisenzo and Knudsen then two-putted for their pars, and there was no change in the match. On the 515-yard par-5 fifth hole at the St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg, Roberto Divisenzo hit a big drive down the left side of the fairway, 270 yards. Knudsen down the right, 240 yards. Here's George going at uh, this green, the five par with the three wood. It's a good looking shot. It's going to land short of the green, could run up. It is going to run up to the green. Fine shot by Knudsen. What a shot with a three wood. It landed short of the green, rolled on up to the backside, and George is on in two. Here's Roberto, one under par. Roberto with a two iron for his second shot. Oh, he's off again. He's off of it. Way off to the right. He's hooking back now. It's coming back. Good. Oh, boy, what a break. 
This ball hit a soft spot out there near the sand trap. Kicked straight left. So both players are on this fifth hole into putting for eagle threes. De Vincenzo's two iron second shot uh, stopped about 30 feet back of the cup. Down, it's going downhill. And George about 27. Both players are on this five par in two. Berto uses a mallet head tight putter. And it's up toward the cup, but strong. Look at that thing go down that hill. Boy, he really wrapped that one. He has a good six-foot putt coming back. The winner of today's match will meet the winner of our second semifinals coming to you next week from New Orleans. Dan Sykes, who won an opening round match in Tobago, the West Indies, will meet Frank Beard, our opening round winner in Mexico. The winners of today and next week's matches will play in the finals at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. He made it. Boy, he liked it. He certainly wanted to make that one. You see how Roberto cutted that first. He wanted to get the pressure off of himself. Here's George for an eagle three. That's firm, too. It's going to run on past the cup and still trickling on down, and he has about a three-footer coming back. He uh, learned a little something there on Roberto's approach putt. Roberto ran past about six feet, George about three. George coming back on the same line that Roberto had, up and straight. He got it. <laughs> and through the fifth hole, both players picked up birdies here on this five par fifth. DiVincenzo is two under par and Knudsen one under par. This is one of the most important men in Manitoba. He is a farmer. The early settlers, seeing how thickly the wild hay grew in the rich black earth, planted wheat, and for many years, wheat was king. But Manitoba is no longer a one-crop province, and farming is no longer a one-man operation. True, there is still room for one in the tractor seat. But riding along with this farmer and all the farmers of Manitoba are the skills and techniques, the knowledge and efforts of men and institutions dedicated to helping him in his important task of growing more food for more people in this rapidly expanding world. This is the University of Manitoba, one of Canada's finest educational institutions. In the university's School of Agriculture, scientists, faculty members, and students work constantly to expand the limits of knowledge in the field of agriculture. Shell is no stranger here. For Shell agronomists frequently work closely with university scientists here and at other agricultural schools in programs supported by Shell grants. Shell Canada Limited serves the farmer in another way too, through the Shell Farm Agency. This is not only a supply depot for the farmer, the place where he can get the products necessary to the profitable operation of the modern farm. It is also an information and guidance center where, with the help of the Shell Farm agent, he can keep abreast of the latest developments and techniques applicable to his highly competitive business. Supplying farmers everywhere with the products and services they need is another way in which Shell tries to be a good neighbor. For the world is Shell's neighborhood, and wherever you see it, this is the symbol of Shell's worldwide search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. The sixth hole, a par four of 470 yards, is a straightaway shot to the fairway, then dog legs just a bit to the right. With the honor, Di Vincenzo drove out about 230 yards from the tee. Knutson followed with a shorter drive and caught the right-hand fairway trap out about 200 yards. George, with a good lie, decided to go with a four wood. Whoa, he topped it, Cole topped it. It just barely carried out, ran down the rough, and George must be 160 yards short of this number six hole, four par in two. He took the wood out of the sand trap and hit it right on top. It just got out of the bunker, trickled on down in the rough, and he's still in the rough and about 160 yards from the green. Di Vincenzo, down the right side of the fairway, about 235 off the tee, is using a one-iron for his second shot. Di Vincenzo is off of it again, way off to the right. It's going to carry up over the gallery's head. Out to the right side, just about pin high, but he's way off to the right side. 
And uh, George Knudsen is short about 160 yards in the rough. George Knudsen uh, topped his second shot out of the sand trap. He's still in the rough, about 150 or 60 yards short of the green. He's going to use a six iron. Here's George with his six iron about ready to hit. And uh, it looks like a pretty good looking shot here. It's going to be off to the right of the flag, but it's a good shot. From out of that rough, he's on the green and short to the right. Roberto's second shot stopped out in the rough near a water pipe. He was allowed to drop the ball. He's still in the high grass off to the right. Pitching up with a wedge. Looks like it's going to be a good one. It lands just about right. Runs up toward the cup and a great recovery after completely missing his second shot way off the ball in front of it and knocked it 30 yards to the right of the green. George's putt is to the right. It's coming back a little. Made an effort to come back onto the line, but it didn't. And George's long approach putt was very good. He's going to mark it because he would have to stand in Roberto's line of putt. Roberto is putting for par here. If he makes this, he remains two under. Roberto's putt is just about three feet. He knocked it in the center of the cup, and again, Roberto is, has scrambled himself a nice par from way off to the right of the green. Knudsen for a bogey five. George got it. Uh, Roberto, you doing a lot of scrambling today, huh? Jimmy, I hit a lousy second shot. I tried to hit the one low... Uh, Punch uh, shot into the... Punch shot, yeah. And I push... Way out to the line. Yeah, I saw you down yeah. there. You were yeah. way in front of the ball, huh? It's, it's got two hooks. Eh? Yeah. Um, this is my trouble. All the time I, I want to hit the ball low, uh, it's got to hook and I push the ball to the right. You the same thing happened in the number uh, uh, third hole. But you scrambled like Vic Gezzi there a couple of times. <laughs> huh? Like you and, the, and, you, and, the, and, and, and you, good time, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, through the sixth hole, DiVincenzo is two under par and leading on... Shell, wonderful world for golf. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roberto. On the par three, 206 yard seventh hole, the players missed the $10,000 hole in one prize money as both used three irons. DiVincenzo was very strong and finished back over the green about 60 feet past the pin. Newton was pin high about 15 feet away. Roberto was first to play using a wedge. And it's going to be off to the left and strong, still rolling and rolling. And he pitched himself uh, down the hill and has just about a 10 foot of left. Knudsen's fine three iron shot carried uh, on the front side of the green and ran up just about pin high to the left. He has about a 15 footer. Here's George, even par, DiVincenzo, two under. That's good. Oh, he got a lot of the right side of the cup and uh, swung on past about three feet. Jet passing overhead. And George made it. Here's DiVincenzo with a putt for his par. George got his. It's short. Had a good line there, and Roberto left it short on line all the way, and he picked up his first bogey. And after seven holes of play, DiVincenzo is one under par, leading Knudsen, who is even. George Knudsen had the honor on the par four, 375-yard eighth hole, and hit a drive which finished in ground under repair about 230 yards from the tee. Roberto then drove in the rough to the right, just about the same distance as Knudsen's shot. You can see the white stakes indicating the ground under repair area. George had a free drop and would be playing a nine iron for his second shot. He's a good wind player. George uh, is off to the right. It's going to land to the right side of the green, jumps up in the fringe, and that's where George's ball came to rest. DiVincenzo pushed his tee shot out in the short rough to the right, also going to use a 9-iron for his second shot. 
Roberto's second shot with a nine iron is going to be short to the right. It kicks up on the green now, and Roberto has a very, very long putt left. DiVincenzo has a long putt, 36 feet from the pin and to the right. Very flat green, this one. Strong, strong, strong. Boy, look at that thing go. Ooh, Roberto ran it way past the cup. Good five feet there. It's going to put it out, I believe, to uh, get the pressure off of it. Not too happy with himself. He's talking to himself all the way up. Ooh, gosh, Roberto, two bogeys in a row. Three putted here. So uh, that's the way it goes, Roberto. Uh, Hit strong approach putt there from 36 feet out. Mm, I hit it too strong from there, Jimmy. Yeah. Mm. George has about an 18-footer. He's in the fringe there. He's mm. also got about the same type of putt, hasn't he? Well, it's the same side from the green. But uh, we got a bit lie there. I think yeah. we'll, we'll jump a little bit for this yeah. come the ground. It's going for the pass, too, but oh, not oh, much. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. He plays safe. Yeah, in that try. I don't think he tried. I think he tried to be safe. Yeah, because that's yeah. not a putt that you could yeah. fool around with too much. Yeah. You might run it on pass like you did. George gets his four here on the eighth hole, and after eight holes of play, this match is all even, just as it started. The ninth hole at the St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, is a dog leg left, 390 yards. And here is George Knudsen. He started this one on the right side of the fairway. The wind is drifting it back now. It should hit in the fairway. It does, and it's trickling on through and runs on into the short rough, just about a foot or so. Roberto DiVincenzo took a two-stroke lead going into the seventh hole, but went bogey-bogey. So this match is all even coming to the ninth hole. DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo draws it up over the trees. He's going to land in the fairway and run up toward the crowd, and he has hit a big one down the left side and has cut about 30 yards off of this uh, hole with that tee shot around the left side of this fairway. Newton's ball uh, traveled down the center of the fairway and ran on into the short rough, using a 7-iron for his second shot. Knudsen's ball out of the rough is starting out to the right. It's way up in the air. It's drifting on up high and high, and it's going to carry way up over the gallery's head and back down the embankment and carry 30 or 40 yards over this green, way up over the gallery's head. Here's DiVincenzo with just a half wedge out in front of this ninth hole. Hit a big drive there, 285 yards down the left side. That's a good-looking shot. It's going to be a job. Hit it on the upslope and took the spin, spun toward the hole, and stopped with a nice chance for birdie here. And Newton's ball is about 40 yards from the cup. George Newton from out of the rough is chipping uphill. He's lying to this is the ninth hole. Chips it. Ooh, skulls it. Oh, he half tops it. Just topped it right into the ground there, and he left himself. A good 15 feet short. George seemed to half top that chip shot up the hill there, and it got into the fringe of the green. There's Knudsen from 15 feet for a par. It's to the left. It's to the left all the way, and George uh, is going to putt from about 8 inches. Bogey 5. DiVincenzo, after taking a two-stroke lead going into the seventh hole, dropped back with two bogeys. And now he can take a two-stroke lead if he makes this, one if he misses it. He has about a 10-footer. George went out 37, one over. It's to the left all the way. His ball broke the moment he hit it, and it went off to the left side, and DiVincenzo is going to get his par, and he takes a... One stroke lead here. He's out in 36. Uh, George, I noticed uh, these balls are really flying out of this fescue. Every time one of you get it a little in the rough, you uh, 
it, it's difficult to really hold that ball down, isn't it? That's right, Jim. And then the wind isn't helping. Uh, the shot I hit into the last green, uh, I think if there hadn't been any wind, it would have been all right. But it yeah. got up there and just took off. And, uh, it surely did. I was standing back on the green here, and this thing seemed to just uh, gain altitude as it went over the flag. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think the people were going to see it was up there so high. <laughs> well, you were out in uh, 37, and uh, that's one over par, but a lot of holes left, and anything can happen in this game, can it? Right. I just hope the golf improves a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will. And uh, Roberto, that's a nice round. I thought you were uh, two under and then dropped back. Uh, a couple of bogeys there in a row. You, you, that's uh, unusual for you to make two bogeys in a row, isn't it? Well, Jimmy, I do this all the time. I hit over club in number seven hole, and uh, and then I make three putt number eight, uh, and this give me uh, two over par for this two well, hole, and I am even par now. I got a good putt here. I, th I, I saw the ball go straight, but it break to the left. I, I bet you're glad to see this sun come out to heat up those old bones of yours, huh? <laughs> huh? Well, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it's much easier to play when it's warm. I'm yeah. sure that most of you agree with that. Why don't you go on the 10th tee, and I'll join you fellas in a moment. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. On the par 4, 334-yard 10th hole, Devisons over the honor drove down the right-hand side of the fairway about 255 yards. Knudsen then drilled a drive dead center, which finished just short of Roberto's tee shot. They then played wedge shots to the green and went on to make easy par fours. So the match stayed the same. The par three, 149-yard 11th hole is completely surrounded by trees, and the boys will have to clear the two trees that are right in the middle of the fairway about halfway between the tee and the green. Roberto DiVicenzo using a seven iron off the tee. And Roberto uh, started it out on the right side. It's hooking back toward the flag now. It's going to land on the front side of the green. Spins back toward the front side of this double terrace screen. Here's Knudsen. Oh, Robinson has a good looking shot. Good looking shot. Good looking. So jumped toward the cup, then stopped right there about three feet short. George Knudsen, very popular here uh, in Winnipeg, and they're really rooting for him. Go, George, go, all over the place. DiVicenzo's uh, seven iron shot hung up in the breeze. He has a long 30-foot uphill putt. There's Roberto, he has his line picked out. It's good looking putt there, good looking. Oh! Goodness. Oh, look at the expression on Davis Enzo there. Oh, he said, what opera. He was trying to lag it in there, and it did go in, right in the center. The gallery likes this man. They're rooting for George Nixon, but they oh, what a butt. How oh, you like this oh, butt, Jimmy? I know you was trying to get it like this. Mm, I'm scared to get three butt again. George has just about a four foot here. Oh! Good gracious, how this game can change, huh? What, a, what a funny game, man. Eh? I expect to lose maybe two shots and I get one. Yeah, can you imagine it does? Now, seriously, uh, you know how golf is. It looked like George... He uh, could get easy in one easy, shot. Yes, easy, easy one, one shot, and, then, and here you pick up a shot. And that's the way golf goes, yeah. though. That was a wonderful putt, Roberto. This happened to me all the time. When I got a chance to win one shot, I lose it. <laughs> Not too many times, Roberto. <laughs> DiVicenzo takes the lead by two strokes on Shell's wonderful world of golf. DiVicenzo had the honor on the par four, 414 yard 12th hole. He drove down the middle of the fairway about 235 yards. Knudsen pulled his drive to the left, short of Roberto's. He was partially stymied by a tree as he got ready to play his second shot with a two iron. He started low, way out to the right. It's not hooking back, though. It's going to land very close to the trap. It hits up toward the gallery, and it skidded on out to the right side, just missing the trap and 60 or 80 feet from the pin. DiVicenzo using a five iron for his second shot. DiVicenzo hits it off to the right. It's hooking back. It's going to land up a little strong. It's going to land on the back side and hits the soft mud and skid it off over on the back side of the green, just in the fringe. George is away. He's off to the right. He hit the gallery, and he's going to chip it up with an eight iron. That's a pretty good chip there. Running a little past, but from that distance, 
It was very good. He was running down a hog back there, all the way, and his ball drifted off to the left, and he has about a five and a half, six foot putt. DiVincenzo's second shot skidded off the mud, ran to the backside of the green. He has a long putt downhill, about 45 feet. Roberto's in the fringe, about uh, eight inches off the clip portion of the green with the embankment just back. He'll have to lift this putter straight up and get down on it. He did that. It's going to be strong, and no, it isn't. Slowing up, slowing up. And I thought it was going to be a little strong, but it was not. It stopped off to the left. And he has about a four-footer, George, about a five-footer. Roberto may put it. No, he's, he's going to let uh, George put first. Here's where the pressure is mounting. This game is crazy. The last hole looked like George might pick up one or two strokes. He lost one. Oh, gosh. Boy, that ball leaned up in the cup and then came back. And Knudsen has missed three from that same distance there. The ball just ran up to the cup and seemed to look over into it and then fell back. Half of it was in the cup when he tapped his fifth stroke in for a bogey five. Puts him two over, and Roberto has about a four-footer here to take a three-stroke lead in this very important semifinal match. He made it. Roberto got it down in two from 45 feet away, and through the 12th hole, Roberto DiVincenzo is one under par and leading Knudsen by three strokes. Both players hit long drives on the 516-yard par 5 13th hole. Roberto was out about 295 yards down the middle. George trailed Roberto by about 25 yards, but he too was in a good position down the fairway and was using a three-wood for his second shot. It's a nice shot. He starts to the left. It's fading it in toward the flag. It's going to land on the green, jumps up over the trap, and George got a good break there. His ball hit the gallery and stopped on the fringe about six feet off the clip portion and near the trap. Here's DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo is going with a five iron for his second shot. Roberto right at the flag is going to be a good looking shot by DiVincenzo. It hit on the up slope. He has a short putt here for an eagle three. DiVincenzo hit a good looking shot with the wind at his back, hit the ball on the up slope, Took one bounce up and stopped just past the pin and only about 10 feet away. Knudsen about 45 feet away. George just off in the fringe about uh, five feet, about 40 feet from the cup is going to putt it. It jumped on him in that rough, but it's running on down toward the cup. George Knudsen got his birdie four here on the 13th hole, short five par. That puts him back to one over. He was two over and goes back to one. Roberto DiVincenzo is putting for an eagle three. He is one under par at this time. His 10-footer starts to... With this birdie, Roberto will keep his three-stroke lead, but in metal play, this match can still go down to the last putt. On the par five, 543 yard 14th hole, the players have the hole and there was no change in the match. The players had one more shot at the $10,000 hole in one prize money on the par three, 174 yard 15th hole and Roberto had the honor. He used a four iron and his tee shot caught the sand trap to the right of the green. Newton, with a fine opportunity to gain on Roberto, also used a four iron, but he pulled his ball to the left. It went off the green and rolled down the bank about 50 feet from the pin. George then used a wedge for his second shot. And it's running up. It's got a chance to go in. Oh! Good chip by George there. Fine chip. He's better with a chipper than he is a putter. He's going to put it out. He parted to say one over. Roberto 
Smith is two under. He was two under through the first six holes and bogeyed seven and eight to go back even. And he birdied number 11 and 13. Whoop. Too much sand back of the ball. Roberto stuck his club in the sand. Has a long putt for his par. The winner goes on to the finals in San Francisco at Olympic Club's Lakeside Coast. It is short and to the right. DiVincenzo is putting for a bogey four. Those little white spots you see on the green are seeds from the brasswood trees which surround the greens here at the St. Charles Country Club. He got his bogey. George Knudsen picks up one of the strokes that he was back. He was back three at this point. He's now two down, going to the 16th hole on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. The par four, 348 yards, 16th hole, dogleg sharply to the left. The players can cut the dogleg, but if the tee shot doesn't bend enough, they could go straight through the fairway into a grove of trees about 250 yards off the tee. George Knudsen's drive hit the top of the tall trees off to the left and landed in the swale, which is part of the fairway. DiVincenzo's drive started down the center of the fairway, then hooked around the dog leg, and he finished up in almost the same spot as Knudsen. This green is surrounded by five traps, and just beyond the trees on the left is the Assiniboine River. Uh, DiVincenzo and Knudsen drove about the same distance, only a foot or so apart. In fact, they're so close together about 250 yards that Knudsen's going to have to mark his ball to keep DiVincenzo from stepping on it. Knudsen's ball went down through the trees and DiVincenzo's hit the ridge that runs down the fairway and kicked off toward Knudsen. Second shot with a wedge, strong. Oh, it hit the back side of the green, hit soft, run up toward the trap and stopped just short of the trap about a foot. That was DiVincenzo's second shot here on the 16th hole. And here's George Knudsen, down two shots. Three holes to play. George would like to nestle this one in there close. Oh, he pulls it off to the left. Pulls it way off to the left. It's going to land about uh, ten high, although he got a big hand from the gallery. And anything George does today, he gets a hand for. And George is a very popular man here in Winnipeg, and he is a long way off to the left, at least uh, 18 feet with that half wedge shot. Divisenzo about 24 or 5 feet near the trap. DiVincenzo is going to putt. He's downhill all the way. Short frog hair, fringe, about six feet of it. That's going to be strong. Oh, boy, he wrapped in the back of that flag there. Had he not hit that pin, he might have gone down there a good four feet, but he hit the flag. He hit the flag staff and stopped about an inch away. Ran around the cup. Fortunately for Roberto, and he has that option to leave it in any time he's off the good portion of the green, and he did, and took advantage of it. Wrapped it pretty hard. That was going down that hill. Might have run about four feet past. We've seen uh, Miller Barber drop two shots to Dan Sykes at Tobago and lose on the second extra hole. And here is Knudsen down two shots the chance to pick up another one. He's 14 feet out. Sharp breaker to the right here. Puts it up the line. Proper line. Oh! Well, he's coming back and listen to that hand. You'd think it was the Army-Navy game here with a tremendous applause uh, for George Knudsen. And uh, through the 16th hole, DiVincenzo leads by only one stroke over George Knudsen going to the 17th tee. Water, the great gift of Canada's North Country. Life-giving, thirst-quenching, energy-creating water of the mighty rivers that at times seem to be the only living things in this land of muskeg and permafrost. But before the awesome potential of this gift can be realized, the water must be harnessed, the energy channeled and tamed and made useful to man. This is being done on the Nelson River in northern Manitoba. The building of a dam to control the power of a river like the Nelson would be a massive undertaking anywhere. But here, when winter temperatures drop to minus 50 degrees, 
and where the brief summer sun turns the muskeg into an impenetrable quagmire, and all nature seems to fight against man's intrusion, the project staggers the imagination. Yet, it is being done. And soon the potential energy of a wild river will be transformed into 1,224,000 kilowatts of electrical power for the burgeoning industry of southern Manitoba. Two things make the Nelson River project possible. Men and machines. The men who brought with them to this northern wilderness their creative skills, their knowledge and abilities. Not only to build, but to build well in a land where mere survival is a constant problem. 2,000 such men are here, and they are doing the job. The machines to amplify the strength of those men, to do man's bidding smoothly and efficiently in a country which needs only the indication of a weakness in order to destroy. The machines are here, and they are doing their job. All the fuels and lubricants used to keep those machines operating under all conditions is being supplied by Shell Canada Limited. And Shell, a company with a world of experience, has the size and know-how to supply such a gigantic and remote project with the necessary products and services. Also, Shell provides the full spectrum of petroleum products and has the facilities to create the special products that might be needed. And the Shell products used on the Nelson River are made to the standard of excellence for which Shell is known the world over. On the Nelson River project and throughout the world, this is the symbol of that excellence, of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. On the par four, 348 yard 17th hole, George Knudsen had the honor and with a following win, unloaded his longest drive of the day, about 300 yards off the tee. Roberto then followed with another long drive and was just about 20 yards short of Knudsen. Roberto was using a wedge. He hits a good-looking shot. It's going to be a good shot. Whoa, hit very hard. Wow, that green hit. Boy, that thing hit extremely hard, and the ball ran down through the gallery into the sand trap. Knudsen trailing uh, three shots just a couple of holes ago is only one down now, and he's lying out right out here in front of the green, only about, uh, oh, 40 yards from the pin, chipping it up with a nine iron. Going to be hard, too. Look at the wind. Take that ball back there. George hit on the front side of the green. His ball ran past. And DiVincenzo hit right in the center of the green and jumped up over the green and through the gallery and down in the trap just over. DiVincenzo has a good lie in the trap. He's a good trap player, Roberto. It's going to be a good one. Good shot by DiVincenzo. He carried a little bit further than he wanted to, but it fits within uh, five feet. Newtson's about 12 feet out in two. DiVincenzo uh, about five feet away in three. So the way it stands right now, this match is all even. Roberto is leading a stroke, but he lies three and Newtson two. The winner of today's semifinal match will receive $10,000 and a chance at the big prize money of $20,000 in the finals. Second prize money here is $7,000. Newtson Made a nice putt on 16 for a birdie, and here he is, right here, with a very important putt in this round, semifinals. Shell's wonderful world of golf. And it looks... Oh! Gosh, that was a fine putt by George there. Good-looking putt. Swung off to the right and gave DiVincenzo a little uh, heart murmur there. But it gave him a little breathing room and eased this putt up quite a bit. Because if he makes this one, he'll be leading one stroke going into the last hole. Oh! Off to the left side. And as we go into the 18th, look at that putt. Right off the left side of the cup. And DiVincenzo has dropped three strokes in a row. And through the 17th hole. This match is going right into the 18th hole with these players all even on Shell's wonderful world of golf.
The 18th hole is 428 four par. Slight dog leg to the left. There's a tree out there about uh, 175 yards off the tee that reaches about, oh, 30 feet high into the air. A couple of trees just short of the green. Two traps, one on the left front, one on the back side, and a couple of trees around the green. And stepping to the tee with the honor, after being, after trailing uh, three strokes and uh, four holes to go, has picked up three strokes the last three holes, and it is George Knudsen. George using his driver with a strong win in his back. Good looking shot there. It's going to uh, go down the center of the fairway. It's going to land near the gallery. Hits up uh, toward the gallery off the right hand side. And he seems to be in a good spot. And we have uh, Roberto Di Vicenzo from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Roberto hits a big drive. My gosh, that ball is way down there, right straight at the green. Fine drive by DiVincenzo here on the 18th hole. 270 yards for Knutson on the right side, and a little more in the center, 320 yards for DiVincenzo. Here's George, matches all even the 18th hole at the St. Charles Country Club in Winnipeg. Here's George with a nine iron for his second shot. The wind is strong at his back. Be hard to hold this green if he hits it up high. He's going way off to the right. It's going to jump up into the gallery, up over the head, and the way it goes, way up over the gallery's head, into the sand trap, just back of the green. George Knudsen in the trap here on the 18th hole. Roberto just with a half wedge, 320 yard tee shot. Hits it high up in there. It's going to be short, way short. It's going to land on the front side of the green, but hit the hard green and jumps up somewhat, but he's still short of the flag. And George Knudsen jumped up over the gallery's head and caught the sand trap over the green and to the right. Well, here we are on the 18th hole. DiVincenzo and Knudsen, all even. Knudsen's ball into the sand, has a downhill lie, very tough shot, and pitching downhill. It's been windy and cold today. Oh, oh, strong, very strong. He's going way up over the green. He had no chance trickling down and down and down the embankment. And George must be at least 60 feet from the pen. He had a very tough shot there. And George Knudsen is about uh, 40 or 50 feet from the hole. Down the hill, he's going to pitch back up here. He's lying three to Vicenzo in about 15 feet in two. It's going up the hill and takes a spin, and George is lying four, uh, just about nine feet away. If DiVincenzo can get this down in two from about 15 feet, he goes on to the finals in San Francisco. Here's Roberto. He'll try to lag this one up, I believe. He keeps it up under the cup, and he stops it just about two feet away. I don't know whether he's going to put out or not. Yes, I think he is. He's going to put, and if he holds this, he goes on to the finals. Ooh! Boy! <laughs> used up all the cut. <laughs> Roberto says, my gosh, what happened? And Roberto uh, is the winner, but George is going to putt out. This is metal play. George is putting for a bogey five. Knudsen hits it in the cup for his bogey. And he is one over par 73. And Roberto DiVincenzo wins this match. He is even par 72. Uh, George, I know how you feel. You know, that's a tough one to lose. You're down three strokes and four holes to go and all of a sudden this thing is all even coming up to the last hole. I know how you must feel about that. Yeah, Jim, I guess I was up a little too high. I hit that last shot into the last green a little aggressively and I really should have known from the hole before. Yes, I noticed uh, both of you hit the green before going downwind and it continued on uh, in the back side and DiVincenzo's went on all over into the trap. Your ball carried up over the, after the first hop yeah. bounced up over the but people's head. you know, head. he drives it so far that he just chips to the greens. I'm back there, and I've still got to hit an iron shot. I think he might, be, might have been playing the small ball. And, and still, I think the uh, probably the turning point in the whole match was over there on the 11th hole when you were nestled in there about four feet. 
for you, Birdie. You were one shot back at this particular time, and DiVincenzo holds that long putt, and you miss yours. Yeah, that definitely was a high point in the game. Well, congratulations anyway. You're always a great player, George, and one of my favorites. I know you have a great future. Thank you, George. Roberto, congratulations. That was, uh, I know how you feel when you're leading three strokes and all of a sudden you're coming to the last hole even. Uh, you know what I feel, Jimmy? <laughs> I, I feel like I have to be in the home to watch my grandson after the way I played the last three holes. <laughs> <laughs> you say in the 11th hole I, I make the putt and he miss it. I don't make it. The ball goes in the hole. <laughs> oh, oh, on the 11th, right. It did. The 11th, right, That's right. Yeah. But, uh, Roberto, that was a, I know it was a tough match because George was hanging right in there all the way. And we predicted this match would come right down to the last hole, and it certainly did that. Well, I want to be, be uh, in the last hole, I want to get one or two shots uh, in, in the head. But mm -hmm. uh, George, he made a good putt in the 16th hole, and then I scared in the 17th, and... And I can't tell you how I feel in the 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, why don't you and Roberto go on over to the clubhouse, and I'll join you in just a moment. Right. Roberto, good luck in the rest of the finals. Thank you very much. Thank you, George.